welcome back. Our guest tonight is Kristen Megan. She is an Air Force veteran and an advocate exposing geoengineering. Here's actually a video to give you a little bit more of her background. Well, part of my job in bioenvironmental engineering was to approve hazardous materials that came on the base. I sat at a computer and I approved those hazardous materials on base and tied them to a process and a building. So when I started approving what is called an Air Force Form 3952, the approval of hazardous materials, and I started seeing barium, aluminum oxide, and strontium come on the base from a contractor whose name was not listed, which was not normal. I started to realize that those crazy tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists might not be so crazy. I lived about less than a mile behind the flight line at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City. And due to my background as an industrial hygienist and an environmental specialist, I conducted soil grid sampling and grade sampling. Those of you who may not be too privy to chemistry, you know that there's natural elements occurring in Earth. Aluminum is one of them. However, barium, radioactive, and strontium are not. So I conducted those samples and saw limits in my community that would make your head spin. And I started to realize that those peers within my professional community that were trying to wake those of us in the military up were right. And joining us now is Kristen Megan. Thanks for joining us, Kristen. Well, hello. All right, Chris, now we just watched that video of you at the Atlanta Festival, I believe it was the Atlanta Music Liberty Fest. Can you tell us what was going on out there and about what time was that? When was that? Um, it was back in April. Actually, there's a group of organizers. I'm sure you might have heard about Paul Fest, mm -hmm. you know, back last August. Well, there's a lot of liberty-minded, truth-minded um, events around the country that are put on randomly by different people. And they're all focused around speakers and musicians, and it's just a way for people to get together and kind of network and share information. So you'll have you know, people there from uh, different musical acts to, you know, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth will show up. So, yeah, I was a speaker at that event. Um, I think it was in, in early April down in Atlanta. Now, I'm sure as a veteran, you've got a lot of people, they respect you for your service, but they're kind of curious as to, you know, why is she an authority on things such as geoengineering, and what would you say to those people? Well, um, some people are familiar with my background. You know, I was in the Air Force nine years, and my job was called bioenvironmental engineering. So if you're kind of familiar with what OSHA is and what the EPA is, our job is to kind of track all the exposures to both military and civilian personnel on the bases, um, both home and deployed. Part of that is to know all the constituents or chemicals that are used on base. So we would use a system where if you were ordering materials or chemicals, it went through a computer system. And we would have to tie those um, those materials to a building or a task known as like a case file. And the reason for that was knowing what was brought on base, we could then say, oh, whoa, this is hazardous. These people need to be in respirators or, you know, they need gloves. So it was basically tracking employee exposures. So um, I wasn't really familiar with what geoengineering chemtrails were at the time. So you maybe we'll go into a little bit more, but that's how I got familiar with the constituents that were used is because I would have to tie these materials to a task and this particular constituents that were used in geoengineering were not tied to a task. Exactly. And I saw something that was very interesting to me. You talked about Tinker Air Force Base in that clip we just, just showed a second ago. And it's very interesting to me because I live in the state of Oklahoma. I've been there. My dad visits there regularly as an Air Force veteran. And I'm just curious, you know, can you tell us again the story, you know, your, your experience at the Tinker Air Force Base and how you came across some of this information? Yeah, um, of course, I went into the military after 9-11, um, trying to be all gung-ho and supporting my country. And, you know, I went in around 2001, 2002, and I think it was around 2006, I actually watched um, Terror Storm. Mm -hmm. And that kind of turned my world upside down. I know in an attempt to debunk that, I kind of stumbled upon other things and it kind of changed my mindset what was going on. Well, one of the things I stumbled upon was people talking about these chemtrails or geoengineering and, and um, you know, population control and all these crazy theories. And I started to kind of go on different forums and hear people that claim to be whistleblowers 
um, who were pilots that didn't want to be named. And, and at the time, I started getting more information. People started describing the aircraft that we had on base. People started describing that they were unmarked. And also the materials, again, I spoke before, when materials would come on base, they would be tied to a case file. And I remember a time seeing certain constituents coming on base that were kind of, they weren't classified, but they didn't quite make sense. The, the name of the contractor wasn't identified. It was very vague and it wasn't tied to a process. It was just a number and that wasn't normal, but I just figured it was a contractor. So I started doing my own investigation. With all this information, I started to gather on knowing, hey, these people are describing the aircraft, um, the J-Stars we had on base, um, and we're a perfect base. We take aircraft down uh, apart down to the last screw. It's, it's a maintenance base. And before those airplanes roll out, they fly unmarked and they're white. Mm -hmm. So I thought, this is just too convenient. Somebody's just making this up because they're familiar with this information. Well, I lived about a mile um, behind the flight line at Tinker Air Force Base. So I started conducting my old soil grid sampling. I lived in a relatively new neighborhood, so I knew, okay, anytime someone knows how to do soil sampling, you should always go and get the background soil sampling in your area. Mm -hmm. Different regions of the country have higher radiation in the background, um, different type of soil. So I got the local information from my county, and I had the parameters to bump it against. And what was coming back was high PNAs, which are polynuclear aromatic um, materials that are naturally occurring in Earth, but it's usually associated to something man-made when it's that high, unless you had bad backfill. Right. I was getting barium, aluminum, and even though some of these items are naturally occurring in Earth, the compounds that they came back in were all industrialized. So this wasn't like something that would just be normal. So this kind of freaked me out and I thought, all right, well, this isn't a super fun site. These contaminants shouldn't be in the soil. So I just kind of well, at that point, let me, me ask you just to interrupt okay. for just one second. At that point, when you said these materials shouldn't be in the soil, what was your original thought? What was your uh, conclusion as the original source? Well, again, because I had that background information to bump it up against and knowing how strict the EPA was in Illinois, I knew it wasn't bad backfill. Um, there's nothing going on in my neighborhood. I immediately figured it was some sort of contaminant coming from the base. Mm. Now, the problem was at the time, you know, it's like this is huge information. People are going to think I'm crazy. So I started kind of to tell some of my peers who were like, all right, well, yeah, I've heard of it, but let's not go there. You know, About what time could... was this? What year? Um, this was around um, 2007, 2008. Okay. Yep. Um, soon after that, I transferred to the other um, depot maintenance space, which is in Warner Robins, Georgia. Um, there also, I started seeing the same things, not as far as the base approving those chemicals, but the soil samples were coming back the same. And then I started to do rain sampling and soil sampling just at, you know, I travel a lot. So I've even done them here in Chicago and the same materials, different parameters, but if you were to do soil sampling, like say you're a contractor and you're installing a new um, underground storage tank, before you can dispose of that, the dirt that you just removed, you have to, each state has their own form that they have to fill out to determine if the soil is contaminated because it has to be hauled off as special waste. Well, what I was finding in my soil would have been considered um, special waste. So the government should have done something. And I've uh, contacted EPA in my region and they just, they have nothing to say about it. Yeah, nothing to say. The EPA. No. So you're a veteran. You you were uh, active duty at the time. Correct. So you're active duty uh, personnel in the United States military. You contact the EPA, and you already said your title. You're very uh, familiar with these type of works, and they just did not care. Exactly. You know, I'm not just an average citizen. Part of my job was to do industrial hygiene and, and environmental quality assessments. So, no, they just brushed it off. And actually, it wasn't until I separated from the military, for some reason, I stayed government, and I worked for um, one of the veterans hospitals around here. And during an assessment, I ran across an EPA worker, and he mentioned, actually, uh, an article he had read or something from Alex about all the cameras here in Chicago. Oh, yes. And I'm thinking, <laughs> an, EPA, an EPA assessor knows about Alex Jones while, you know, I was biting at my nails waiting for this whole thing to get over to kind of pull him aside. 
we ended up talking for two hours and he had pulled out a camera because during the inspection they take lots of pictures he showed me about 500 photos of you know different lines in the sky he had deemed chemtrails i guess he's been following it religiously and he had told me he's brought it up to his director and his directors just totally say we're not going there. We're not talking about it. And he's actually, um, he has felt reprised because he's worked there at the time, 26 plus years, and they still had him as a field assessor. Um, when this person retires, you know, I still keep in contact with him. He's, he's going to come out rogue and start talking about some stuff, you know, so he can collect his retirement. You know, that's, that's his choice to just wait it out. But right. to hear someone from the inside getting the same scrutiny that I experienced as a sister, uh, you know, federal employee is just appalling. Exactly. Now, Kristen, our time is short. I just want to ask you a few more questions. Going back to when you first discovered this, back when you were active duty, and you try to, you know, share this view with your fellow, uh, with your fellow people there in the military. What's, what was the reaction to that? And also some of the alternative news that may have been going on at the time. How receptive was the military to that? Well, around 2007, 2008, there was only one other person that was stationed with me there that was totally aligned but afraid to speak. And I'm known as a loudmouth. So, mm -hmm. um, but actually, as progressing, even as of recent, um, some people still in my career field in bioenvironmental engineering are fully awake. I mean, they're huge chemtrail followers. Um, you know, they don't want to reveal their identity. They're still in, but they're saying, you know, that they believe it. They see some of the same the stuff I do. And actually, after that speech kind of got a lot of attention, mm -hmm. um, people at Tinker Air Force Base were told not to contact me or really? talk to me. Yeah, via any government communication. So wow. I still I still talk to people there. And if I were to email them, they were to delete and not reply. All right, Kristen, just so. a rapid fire session here. So when people see these aerosols hanging around in the sky and they say, oh, those are just uh, contrails, those are supposed to be there, what would you say to that person? I would say look closely. A lot of people that are the disinformation trolls will tell you uh, there's contrail science. But I'd say look, pay attention if there's a lot and they don't, you know, it's a nice warm day and they're dissipating horizontally and they're staying and they're going from lines to designs to clouds. I mean, I really would pay attention and contact your local officials and demand answers. I mean, yes, there are contrails, but the thing is, is when you see an actual plane flying right next to another plane that is spraying contrails and you see it turning on and turning off, to me, it's an answer for itself. Yeah, it's so obvious. We've been showing some uh, some B-roll footage while you were talking there, and you can see a plane is flying, nothing's come out of it, and then all of a sudden, just pff, it just starts dumping all this uh, this chaff into the sky. Now, Kristen, uh, what are your final thoughts? Well, my final thoughts are, you know, here in my area, uh, west suburbs of Chicago, actually, we just got sprayed with BTK to kill moths, which, if you're familiar with the makeup and chemistry, look it up. It has a similar protein makeup as anthrax, and they actually sent out an alert to let people know this was being sprayed. So my thing is you're admitting you're spraying a biohazard on us, but you'll ignore chemtrails. Yes. I think if enough people educate themselves and demand answers, not to say it's going to stop immediately, but if enough people get angry, this can't be avoided. Exactly. We just had a guest on the other day. Uh, he made an app for chemtrails or contrails, yeah. whatever you want to call Skyder them. I believe it's yeah, Alert. And I it's, it's, sell, it's uh, selling very well from what I understand. Definitely yeah. happy for him. Now, Chris, Chris I want to ask you uh, one final question. I'm sure you've probably heard about Adam Kokesh and his arm march on Washington, yeah, D.C. So what are your thoughts about that? Would you participate in that if you could? I'm actually going to be there filming. Um, so I, I do a lot of different media contributing. So I'll be covering for the next news network. Um, but more power to people. I mean, I'd say civil disobedience is what we need. I think if we outnumber um, the bad police, mm -hmm. I think this can, can have a good ending. But here's the thing. A lot of them are probably going to be veterans, and people will say, what are you doing? Those people signed up to die for their country in the military. So why is it suddenly unlawful when they're willing to die for the country still upholding their oath in civilian clothes. I, I don't see what the big hoopla is, but I, I think it's an awesome thing. All right, so just to clarify to our viewers who may not be aware of this, this is going to be an armed march in Washington, D.C., July 4th. People will be carrying loaded long guns strapped to their backs. And, Christian, you support that? I do. I think that there's nothing wrong with carrying a weapon. We drive vehicles every day, which are more dangerous. We oh, carry yes, pills definitely. in our purses. So I just think people have to go in there knowing the consequences. Uh, and Adam has made it clear if you are arrested to just, you know, take what's coming towards you because this is civil disobedience. And I, my fear is there will be provocateurs. But again, you know, Oath Keepers is a big thing, you know.
you're upholding your oath, regardless if you're just a civilian, you're you're protecting the constitutional rights. And I, I don't I don't see why anyone can say anything negative about this because we need our weapons to protect ourselves from those um, unlawful people. Great. Now, Kristen, how can people get a hold of you and keep up with your information? Um, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Kristen Megan. Find me on Facebook at Kristen Megan. My website is sugardecoded.com with, with a T. Um, and also, you can just send me an email at Kristen Megan at gmail.com. I'm a huge um, I, I advocate for veterans' rights, so if you have any information you want to share related to chemtrails or just any questions, please feel free to contact me. All right, great. Kristen Megan, a real oath keeper, definitely interested in uh, following your works and also those of Adam Kokesh. Uh, I believe Alex is going to try to make it out there. I may try to see if I can go with him. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen July 4th. So, Kristen Megan, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. There she goes, a good oath keeper. I'm glad to see people actually keeping their oath, people who will not just march with guys with, like Adam Kokesh, but people who will go out and fight things that are not popular. Like she said, when she started back in 2007, 2008, you know, it wasn't popular to talk about this stuff, especially on the military basis. But more and more, as she talks to more and more people, people are waking up. And that's what we need people to do, not just in the military, but in the police and everywhere else. If you're just a normal, everyday citizen, just get this information out to people. And a great way to do that is prisonplanet.tv. You can get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can share your username and password with up to 11 different people. And odds are you're not going to have 11 different people on there at all times. So just go and put it on your Facebook page. Hey, go check out my my prison planet. And different people will log in at different times and get the information. And also, particularly geoengineering and chemtrails. You can check out our pack right here. We're going to show you here in a second. There it is right there. The chemtrails combo pack. What in the world are they spraying and why in the world are they spraying? Two great films, probably the best things we offer concerning chemtrails. You can see it right there for thirty-four ninety, And that's available at the InfoWars store. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and I'll see you next time. have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infowars.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. <laughs> <laughs>